Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org. I'm here with Jeff Frick. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube. The Cube, we go into events like this. We're at Knowledge, ServiceNow's user conference. We try to extract the signal from the noise. We bring you, we love sports analogies <laughs> here. We like to bring you the best athletes, tech athletes, we call them. So <laughs> Carolyn Hollingsworth <laughs> is here. She's, I know Carolyn, you're a fan of, uh, of football, but uh, we're going to call you a tech athlete. So <laughs> Carolyn's with Lennox International. She's an IT practitioner there. Carolyn, thanks a lot for taking some time and coming on theCUBE. So, okay. tell us a little bit about Lennox, uh, about the, the organization and what's your role there. Okay, Lennox is a global manufacturer of furnace and air conditioning equipment. We're based in Dallas, Texas, and um, we have sales of about five billion dollars a year. And I'm the senior manager of uh, service operations. Okay, so, um, this conference is amazing. This first knowledge conference I've I've been to. I presume you've been to others, or is this your first? Uh, this is actually my fourth conference. Okay, so you were the here beginning. at the beginning. So no. um, well they had pretty, a few before that. Pretty but close, <laughs> but so it's it's evolved over the the years. I I'm told. Oh yes, yeah, so it seems like year over year it doubles. Yeah, so it's gotten Basically. bigger and more diverse, or in terms of just the content, or is it still sort of focused on, you know, leveraging the platform and. No, it's gotten more diverse. I mean, they've added, you know, discovery and their, this new orchestration, which is Runbook. That's new this year. Um, they're always adding new modules. So, and then too, now they're really pushing platform. That's the custom applications you can build outside of IT. So, do you? They, they tell us it's really easy to write applications. Can you write applications on the platform? Or? Oh yes. Really, okay, are you a yes. programmer by trade or? Um, I programmed in a past life. Okay. But I really don't program today, <laughs> but I can go in and build screens within ServiceNow and um, do reporting, it's very easy. So I was a programmer of past life yeah. too, and not a very good one, which is why I'm now <laughs> hosting theCUBE. But, uh, but I have an idea for an app, so I'm dying to get my hands on uh, the platform so I can play around with it a little bit. Well they just came out with a brand new app that they say that, um, Anybody can sit down and write an application. App creator, right? Yes. Yeah, so I yes. will test that anybody uh, <laughs> claim. So <laughs> they actually have a hackathon going on, I believe, tomorrow. <laughs> if yeah, you we actually get covered that earlier today. Yes. We were in there filming it. That, okay. The hackathon is underway. They're, they're working until midnight. I, I yes. made sure that they, they had pizza and caffeine and sugar <laughs> on order for them. I think they're going to have a little uh, bonus uh, Vegas entertainment. Yeah visiting at some point in time. <laughs> so tell us more about how you're using service. I'm really interested in the sort of before and after. So if you could describe life before ServiceNow came in, you know, what was that like and, and how did it change? And we'll get into the implementation a little bit. Well, um, before ServiceNow, we did have an, an application for the help desk to take tickets, but that's about all we did. Nothing else um, within IT really had a system uh, like ServiceNow. After we brought ServiceNow in, you know, we're, we're it, it's a complete package. They keep, you know, they say um, ERP for IT. Well, it truly is. You can do uh, ticketing. Uh, we're doing um, uh, change, change management, discovery of all of our assets. Uh, we've built our own applications for access management, um, even. Departments outside of IT are coming to us now and saying, hey, we see what you've done with ServiceNow. We have something we think that maybe we could use it for. So we've built applications for HR. Uh, we're building an application for our R&D department to um, track the various um, incidents and changes that goes on with the large test cells for um, HVAC equipment, um, marketing, we have some small um, retailers that has pieces and parts for our HVAC equipment around the United States. We've built an app for them to bring in uh, new equipment and it has to go through a workflow and be approved by like a district manager. Pricing changes, um, sales programs all have to be approved. Well, we built an app for them 
that runs on ServiceNow also. So prior to ServiceNow, you had a collection of spreadsheets. I've seen the spreadsheets. I mean, it's an yes. asset spreadsheet, and you have spreadsheets on top of spreadsheets, right. and, and that's, that, that describes your environment? Oh yes, definitely. And somebody owned the spreadsheet. This is probably, <laughs> Hopefully. Right, yeah, this is before you know, Google Docs, right? right. So it was, right. it was, I got it, you take it, you take it. So you had all this sort of version you know, control simultaneous and versions and going on. Conventions and or email. Email was always a big way to uh, pass around tasks to various people. Can you take care of this? Can you do that? Now, you, you, may, you very well may have had project management systems, right? Um, Actually, we had a homegrown project management system. So a lot of customers, right? The yeah. Homegrown or Microsoft Projects or you know yes. whatever, 37 Signals. I mean, there's, there are many out there. So how did ServiceNow sort of change things? In other words, what can you do now that you couldn't do then? We have one system where everything is. So there's no, you know, before, someone would say, this is the way it is, and another one might be tracking the same assets or the licenses, and we had two, two answers. Now we have one system that um, is the record. Their goal, we call it our golden record. So everything is in service now, it's connected to each other. It, you know, if you think of ERP for manufacturing, it's, you know, everything is connected to each other. Right, so they it's, feed it's each other. you used to have to yeah. add one plus the other, divide by two, and say, okay, that's the truth. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So Carolyn, can you talk a little bit about mobile and how mobile's impacting your business? We keep hearing about it, we keep hearing about it. I think of the Linux guy out in the truck uh, checking in on the HVAC outside the house in the commercial. Actually, um, they are actually building uh, computer controls into our units now. Um, they've, uh, I guess, announced a couple of them, but um, it's going to be able to call home when it has a problem. And it's just starting, but I mean, they're actually taking this mobile idea to our products. And our, um, we're doing some POCs where our sales force is getting iPads and they're going to be doing some apps within uh, Salesforce.com. <laughs> we can talk about that one, but um, <laughs> they're still it's okay. You can talk yeah. about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but, you're a busy um, lady. You got to manage a lot of different IT. Uh, IT pieces so I mean, of the puzzle. So that, we're that starting sense. to to delve into mobile. Uh, we're looking at possibly replacing um, all of our laptops with either notebooks or tablets. So we have a lot of PLCs going on right now, just trying to put a strategy together as to what our mobile is going to be. But it's coming to Orgis so all different ways. Were there challenges in terms of, you know, you, so you bring in service now, you get the single system, really call it the, the gold. Golden record. Golden record. That's right, like <laughs> the golden tape. Were there challenges in getting rid of stuff? We have a wiki bomb, we call it GRS, getting rid of stuff. Getting rid of, for instance, uh, legacy systems uh, that had sort of embedded themselves into the organization, and how did that go? How did that all come about? Well, let me tell you first how ServiceNow got into our organization. Um, we had this older system and we'd had it for 10 years and um, I mean, it was meeting our needs, we thought. I mean, we didn't really have any problems with it. We weren't looking for a new system. And uh, I remember this is five years ago. We, I got an email out of the blue for, with a little embedded uh, commercial for, or demo for ServiceNow and it was, I mean, just sort of like mind-boggling what they were saying they could do and how it was all packaged in one package. And um, basically, I thought, you know, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> just from that, just from that video. And, and what so was the use case that they, that they outlined that grabbed you so effectively? It's just that everything, you know, it was their ERP system for IT. Everything was there, it's connected. We had the system we had, all we had was ticketing. If you wanted problem, you had to buy another module. If you wanted change, you had to buy another module. Everything you wanted was more money. This was one package, one subscription price, and you know, you got it all. And, uh, but it took me a year to convince my peers and our VP that we should be looking at this. Now, why did it take so long? What was the kind of friction? What was the discussion like? Well, it was like, well, why do we, you know, the use case, why do, why do you need a new tool, you know? This one seems to be, you know, taking care of it. It's not broke, right. why, why fix, fix it? it? And right. Linux is a very conservative company, and, and we 
have in the past run a lot of old software, as probably a lot of companies do. If there's not a real need there, you know, they don't go out and look at changing. But in, ret in retrospect, it was broke, right? When you compare right, it to what you're right. doing now. So how did right. it affect your business? I mean, did you get more competitive? Are you able to you know, attract better people? Or are you able well, to cut costs? How we, we posed it after, you know, I got some demos going and everybody, in the, you know, interested in looking at this. Um, we convinced our uh, VP that we should go global with this because before, Linux was very um, structured that each locality, because we're global, had their own IT systems and their own IT uh, support groups. So while they reported in dotted line into Dallas, the headquarters, everybody sort of did their own thing. So we came up with this program where we were going to do standard global processes with ITIL. And so that's where we started and then we were going to use ServiceNow as the tool of choice. So um, we started down that path and it did make a big difference to the business because now most of our IT processes are the same across the globe. And uh, you know we're asking everybody to do things the same way, go to ServiceNow, um, and just work that way. So you stuck with it for a year and a half. I mean, you don't seem like the type of person who's going to start pounding the table and, 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 and intimidating people. That doesn't no. seem to be your style. <laughs> so, so uh, I, but you, but at the same time, you you kept at it. So it was a, you know a year and a half before you were able to convince people. So how did you go about that sell process? I'm really well, intrigued Well, yeah, give this. advice to the other people that are in the position that are wondering, they're watching the show, they're saying, Carolyn, help me. How do you convince my senior guys to make this, make this sleep? In fact, they're, they're here today, 30% of the yeah. attendees. Well, ITIL was really becoming big at the time, and there was a lot of news going on about ITIL. And, um, you know, we, do listen to you know Gardner and Forrester and people like that. So I tell it was getting big, and um, I think our, you know it just came at the right time with our VP to say, well, you know maybe this is something we should look into, and you know we got all the senior management together, and basically he said, you know everybody's got to put their thumbs on the table that we're doing this or we're not going to do it, and everybody came to the table and said, yes, it sounds like a good thing to do. So, so. what are you most proud of, uh, the accomplishments that you've, you've made, both you know, professionally and personally, as it relates to this initiative? Um, I think that our support and operations department, or groups, are working um, the most efficiently, that they, the most efficient that they can. And I think that you know, we're responding to our customers' needs a lot faster. Uh, we're not hearing all the complaints that we heard before that, you know, hey, this has been broke, when are you going to fix it, you know. Um, we're even trying to become more proactive. We've brought in some monitoring tools that we didn't have before to help us along those lines. So, just to be more customer-centric and, you know, sort of, instead of saying no to the customer, say, okay, we can do it now. <laughs> <laughs> so all this, I mean, you're using the lines. I mean, yeah. so all the stuff we hear about from going no to now, that's not just, to you, that's not just marketing. You're actually living that. Is that oh, a fair yes, statement? Yeah. Yes, I mean, like I said, we started putting out our own applications and now we have all these customers who wouldn't normally come to support and ask to have, built, to have an application built. They'd go to our project side of the house, but they're coming to us you know, we're working with safety and HR and R&D, and um, you know, I could double or triple my staff just to keep up with the requests we're getting from outside of IT. And, and you're able to do that, so the business is then helping you fund that. Yes, yes. That's it's, gotta it's, feel great. It's so <laughs> easy to make an application. I mean, the other ERP system we use is SAP, and you know, to get a system up in SAP is big dollars, six, eight, nine, 10, 12 months. And we literally built the application for our retail stores in two weeks. So I mean, I, I've been around IT a long time and I've just seen the finger pointing and what are you spending our money on? And it sounds like 
you're, you've flipped or in the process of sort of flipping that mentality. Is that, a, is, am I overstating that or? No, I, th I think that's a true That's got to feel great. Yeah. I mean, yeah, good, congratulations. All right, Carol, well, listen, <laughs> thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and sharing your, your story, the story of Lennox, yeah. your personal story, and uh, really congratulations on all the great progress. Oh, thank you, it was a yeah. pleasure. All right, thank keep you. it right there, everybody. We'll be back. Our next guest is Marina Levinson, who's the founder, former NetApp CIO. We've had a couple of